And welcome back everybody, this is Dragonor2009, I'm going to finish up the HTML tutorial with you. Uh, just to kind of recap what we did, let's go ahead and look at what we did. This is what we did, we created the image here, and we created these nav links. Uh, so now the main goal here is to uh, create uh, this headline tag here, as well as this other headline tag. Some text down here, which is in the form of paragraphs. And... I'm going to create this, uh, which is kind of an interesting thing. This is actually going to go underneath everything. It doesn't look like that right now, of course. Picture, more pictures, bullets, as well as a space here. And more pictures, a selection list, this image, these add blocks, which don't look like blocks yet, and this footer. So we're basically going to do everything in this part right here. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go back to where we're at. Okay, you want to make H1 tag? Um, I purposely, on purpose, uh, created these right here just to show you the difference between H1 tags and H2 tags. Um, what they are, they're headline tags. We'll go ahead and show you what they look like. As you can see, the H1 tag is the larger of the tags, going all the way down to the H6 tag, which is the smaller of the tags. So, depending on what you want and what you're trying to write your content for, um, your, your H tags uh, will determine the size of whatever the title is. Uh, typically, for search engine optimization reasons, uh, H2 tags are pretty good, but it's all up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this because all we want is just an H1 tag. I just wanted to show you that, different sizes. And so, let me go ahead and adjust myself here. We're going to go ahead and move right along. Okay, we're done with the navigation list, we're done with the H1 tag, we're going to create a div, another div, but this time I'm not giving it an ID, don't need to, I'm simply just dividing something. Um, so, and I'm going to create an H2 tag, just like what I showed you, but I'm going to name it July 5, as in an event that's coming up. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do with that, and I'm going to create an emphasis tag. An emphasis tag is basically italics, and I'm going to write, I don't know, dog rescue, if I can spell, mission in Cedar Rapids, I probably spelled that wrong, I think it's an AR, Rapids, Iowa, never been to Iowa. And we're going to end this with an H2 tag. Okay. Uh, so we just got done creating that. Um, we want to go ahead and create a paragraph now. And I already have some text already done for that. So I'm going to go ahead and access that right now. I made it info. And this is going to be for the sidebar. So I'm going to go ahead and copy paste this. Okay, and then whenever you end, you want to make sure, or whenever you do paragraph tags, you want to end them just like so. Now you could leave it at the end like that. However, I personally like it uh, when it's over here because I think it's a lot more cleaner on the uh, document here. And it's a lot easier to do, you need debugging if you need to. But it's up to you. You can leave the paragraph tag at the very end if you really want to. Uh, after we're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and end that div tag, and then I'm going to go ahead and start another one uh, for more events. So I guess what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, put the rest of the events on there, and I'll pick it up from there. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, basically what I just did is I finished up all the rest of these here by creating all these um, events. I just with the same sequence as I did with all the rest of these, so nothing, nothing special, nothing different. Go ahead, fix that up a little bit, and so I'm gonna go ahead and save it and show you exactly what we uh, what we just accomplished here, um, and then we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so we created some more events. As you can see, I put that emphasis tag as I expressed earlier. 
Uh, we use the H2 tag here as well as a paragraph tag. And then of course I just repeated the process for more events. So now we're going to go, let's see, what's our next step? Okay, so now we want to um, put this little text here. And this is actually going to be going underneath the navigation. And then we're going to do another tag or another heading tag and then another picture. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go back to our work file here. Okay, so the next thing is to create another div ID equals. And I'm going to call this under nav. This is going to be under navigation. That way it's a pretty good name that I understand what it is. And we can write down whatever, uh, you know, we can write down. We'll say something like dogs love their owners almost as much as they love their bacon bits. I don't know, just something kind of interesting to put on there. And then what I'm going to do uh, for that is I'm going to end this here. Let's see, what was this? End div tag here. But there's going to do something I'm going to do within uh, this area here. I kind of want to make this a um, a place to have someone click on so they can do some shopping. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I had to answer the phone there. Let's see. So, like I was saying, we're going to create this under the nav here. I was going to go under navigation where it says home, blog, uh, about us, you know, that whole deal. And that's what basically it's going to go. What a lot of people put on pages like that, if you just kind of surf the internet, is they'll usually put like a widget on there. Uh, if I ever want to convert this to a WordPress site or something. And they'll put like usually an advertisement or some sort of text on there. So I'm going to kind of keep it somewhat plain. Uh, I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put an href tag in here uh, because I want to be able to reference this to my our store .htm page. Of course I haven't created it yet, but in the event that I do, I'll be able to reference it right here. And of course I'll end it there. And I'll say, please visit. Actually, I'm do one step further than that. I'm gonna create a what's called a break tag. Uh, what a br tag does, which I did that wrong. What a br tag does is it, uh, it goes on to the next line. So that's basically what it is. Cause it you can't just hit enter and then boom it goes to the next line. It doesn't work that way with HTML. Uh, so that's what this is. And then I'm gonna write down. I don't know. Please visit our store. And then I'm going to end the A tag. And then that'll be it for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it should have worked. So let's go ahead and do that. Reload. And here it is. The um, only thing was is I, I did that BR tag. Uh, wrong because I put a slash there and I'm supposed to put it in the other area. So let me go ahead and fix that. I'm sorry about that, folks. A little bit dyslexic, I see. The way BR tags work, it's supposed to put BR and then slash, like, like so. Let me hit save. It should work this time. Okay, so basically what that BR tag is, it puts it on the next line, as you can see, instead of this line here. And then, of course, you hit this to visit our store. Um, and pl I'll probably, if I did this website for real, for let's say if it was a real person, I would make this link to that bacon bits uh, portion of the store that they're selling, uh, whatever that item is. That's how I would have done it in real life. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue on. I just wanted to put that just to show you guys to see how that's like. Also, you can stick an image on here of a cart, maybe, uh, next to that. Uh, there's a little different other little things that we can do as well. But I want to go ahead and move on. Okay, so now that we've created under that nav there, and we ended that div tag out there, um, you don't absolutely have to do this, but you can put a section tag on here. I'm going to do it just just to do it. 
Um, what section tags do, it sections off different pieces of a website, uh, so it's kind of easier to um, kind of break your website down into chunks. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that section. And um, normally you would stick a header in the beginning, but you can also stick it in the middle of a website too. There's nothing wrong with that, because if you guys remember, all I did was create um, the sidebar here. Now it doesn't look like that yet. So it's not really that unusual to stick that header right here. And I'm going to create yet another H1 tag. Uh, I'm going to call this dog training tips. And then I'm going to end this header. Now did I need that header guys? No, I didn't really need it. But I just wanted to show you the different tags that are out there. Um, some people stick things within a header for when they call on their CSS styling sheets. That way they can just style this header. So if I want to stick a bunch of things in here, it will style everything within this header tag. Uh, these header tags. So uh, That's why people sometimes do stuff like that. Okay, and on, on to the next uh, portion here. We're going to go on to create an image. Now we're going to create that dog image that you saw there. Remember it's in my images folder, that's why I'm naming it that. I happen to call this one lazydog.jpg. And I'm going to give it an alt tag of, I don't know, tired dog. Remember your alt tag, you want to put your best keywords on there. But I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, so I'm not too worried about that. Lazy dog for when I reference this later on in the tag and that'll be it. And let's go ahead and just see our progress folks. Go ahead and save this. Okay so we created that um, that storage or that under that nav thing here. We created this H2 tag and we have this picture here. So um, pretty soon I'm going to show you guys in a CSS tutorial how we can resize this. I uh, it works a little more appropriate as well as positioning it on the left side uh, where it fits with the text. But for right now we're going to go ahead and move right along here. After the image we're going to create another paragraph tag but this time I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to write this as a P class and I'm going to name it P1 as in paragraph 1. You can name it whatever you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick some text in here. Put, but let me go ahead and end the paragraph tag before I forget. And I have some uh, text already saved for this. So let me go ahead and grab that text. And this is a website called shrib.com. It's like an online notepad. You certainly don't have to do it like that though. And I'm just going to copy and paste this text that I've already created. And I'm just going to kind of indent this a little bit so it looks nice. Make this even. And I'm going to uh, repeat this same process uh, with another one, so I'll meet you back. Okay, folks, I just what I did is I just repeat the exact same thing, except I named this one P2 for class. And again, class is just something we're going to call later on whenever we do our styling sheets. So I'm going to go ahead and move on uh, from there. And I'm going to do, oh, let's see, I'm going to create a, a head group. An H group um, is new to HTML, and what it does, it groups headlines together. Um, you don't have to use this. I'm simply doing this just to show you uh, different tags that are out there. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll create a head H2 tag within this H group tag, and I'm going to call this simple, or yeah, simple dog training tips. And I'm going to end this H2 tag, and I'm going to create another. Uh, I'm going to create an H3 tag this time. Getting your dog to sit. Getting your dog to sit and stay. I'm going to put an emphasis tag. 
the easy way. I personally don't own a dog, folks, just in case if you're wondering. I just happened to pick this topic because I thought it was easy to write about and it'd be great for this demonstration. So, just in case if y'all are wondering. And of course, I'm going to end this H3 tag here, and that's about it for that. And I'm going to end this H group tag. Then I'm going to go ahead and move right along here and put an image equals. And remember, that's in my images folder. So I'm going to put a slash. And I named this one sittingdog.jpg. Give it some alt tags. Um, I don't know. Dog that is sitting. And give it an ID equals. I'm going to name it sitting dog. And we're going to put a slash here. And I'm going to do yet another P class here. Equals uh, P3. And of course you want to end your P tag. And of course within there I've already copied the text already while I was on that uh, break there. So I'll go ahead and kind of organize this a little bit so it looks nice. Indent things. And we're going to go ahead and save this because I'm going to show you what kind of progress we made. It's always nice to do that. Okay, well, uh, last time we visited this page, we did this picture here. So what else have we done since then? Uh, we've created these two paragraphs here. Uh, we created this headline here, as well as another headline underneath. This was that H group that we just did, as well as this image here. And we created that P3, um, what I named it for a class, our third paragraph, that goes in here as well. So we're going to go ahead and move right along. Let's see, what else? how much more do we got? Well, as you can see, we have the list items yet to do. Another paragraph that's inside here. More list items, another paragraph, a picture, and some, um, this, this actually goes with that. An option selection list, and, so, and an image as well as a footer. So, not too much more to go. And these also, these things will be easy to create though. So let's go and uh, go back and see we can create the unordered list. So if you guys remember from the top up here, we use what is called UL unordered list. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but except this time I'm not going to make any href tags because they're not going to be any links to anything. So I'm going to put ahref, uh, not ahref, unordered list. Uh, I'm gonna, and I'm going to give this an ID, by the way, ULID equals, and I'm going to name this one Trick1, one. just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and place the list items um, that are on here. And let's see, the first list item, and I'm going to create what's called a strong text. Uh, what strong does is basically it bolds the words. It's another way of putting bold on there. And I'm going to say something like, stand in front of your dog. And, you know, it's kind of like how you'd start it out. And I'm going to end that. And then I'm going to go ahead and complete um, whatever it is I got to write about. And, of course, you guys know me. I have already have it saved. So I'm going to go to that right now. And here are my list items. Copy. And this, and then now that I'm done with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and create um, another list item. Uh, what I'm going to do, guys, since you kind of get the idea, in fact, I should have ended that list item, my fault, folks. You guys kind of get the end idea that you have to create list items. Start out with another list item, end the list item, 
So basically what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to copy this entire list here. Uh, so that way we're all on the same sheet of music. And then we can continue on from there. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so basically I did the exact same thing I did up there. I didn't change nothing. All I simply did was um, create a list item, put the strong tags in there, and the strong tags, and the list item, as you can see here. I did that for all of them. So, that's really about it, except this one. And we're going to go ahead and save this, and I'll show you what the progress is. Oh. We have um, all these right here. And I told you guys I wanted to create some white space here. So I'm going to use some BR tags. And it's going to come in handy later on, especially when we're doing our CSS. Because some of these um, bullets are going to run into our container. Um, you won't see that now, of course, but you'll see it later. Um, so to prevent that, uh, what I would do is I'd create some BR tags up here. And I think three of them is all I needed, but if I need any more I can always come back and put some more. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and you sh it should create some white list or some white space up there. And it did, so. Alright, so next order of business is, as you know, there was a paragraph that we needed to get, so let me go ahead and grab that paragraph. And just like um, like everything else, remember you want to end that um, unordered list. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, next after we did that, um, I said I wanted to do a paragraph, and I'm going to name this one P class equals. Well, what do you guys think? P four. So let's do that. And we're going to go ahead and end the paragraph. And I'm going to stick everything inside there I just copied. Just like so. Create a little space here. And I probably should do that up there, but I'll probably do that um, off camera here. And let's see. Um, created that paragraph. I want to create yet another um, one of these, another one of these uh, trick, well I'm going to name it trick 2. I'm going to do the exact same thing except I'm creating another uh, list here. So I'm gonna, it's the exact same steps, it's ULID equals, instead I name it trick 2 instead. And I don't have any these BR tags up here, but I do have all the list items, the strongs, the end of the strongs, and the list items. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste that so I don't waste you guys' time. Control C, and I forgot to put the LI tags here apparently, but that's okay. We're going to make that unordered list. Uh, I want to ULID equals trick two. And, oops. And slash UL. Some space here, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste what I just created there. Kind of indent things to make things look look a little nicer. And I, I'm the one that created all this, guys. I didn't copy and paste this from like some website or nothing, so it's not like plagiarism not like that. I, I made all this text up myself, so um, it's probably it's probably bad advice for <laughs> training dogs, but I just did it simply for demonstration purposes only, really. Um, and I need to go ahead and end these LIs. I should have done that previously before I did this recording, but I didn't. And 
that takes care of that. Um, let's see, and of course you want to end your UL like we did. And now that we did that, we can move on to the last of the paragraphs. I think it's the last paragraph. No, we got one more. I'm going to name this one P class equals, what do you guys think I'm going to name it? You guessed it, P5. And you guys probably already know, I already have it saved here. Most website tutorials you see on YouTube will use lorem ipsum text just to throw something in there. But I kind of want to make this realistic, so that's why I did it this way. I'm going to end your paragraph tag. Okay. And after the paragraph, I'm going to go ahead and put an image in there. Equals. Um, I'm trying to refer to my notes here. I want to see what I named it. Champion Dogs. Dot JPEG. And of course, you want to name this something more clever than what I'm naming it. But for now, this is good. And I'm going to give it an ID called, what do you guys think, Champion Dogs. In case if I want to reference it later. And just because I'm given these IDs, don't necessarily mean I will referencing, reference them, but it gives me more versatility. So let's say I didn't have any IDs for any of these, or classes for that matter. Then when I do my styling sheets, it's going to be the exact same for every single image. Well, if I put IDs on here like I'm doing... Um, I can style a specific individual image as opposed to just all of them. So that's why I'm doing it this way, guys. This is the professional way of doing it. And by the way, I don't claim to be a professional in all this, by the way. Um, I just know a little bit about this. Okay, so that's what you're going to do there. And then I'm going to go ahead and end that section tag. I forgot to put the slash there. And we're going to go ahead and save it, and then we're going to show you guys what the progress is. So we should have another list item, and we do. And we have uh, that picture. Now I want to go ahead and, if you guys remember, the thing we're missing is, uh, well, not the paragraph tag, but we're missing this here uh, selection list. Well, another somewhat of a paragraph tag. It's more of an aside tag though. An image adds and a footer and that will conclude this whole tutorial here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, well let's go ahead and finish off with that. Uh, uh, let's, let's start off with the aside tag rather. And the side tag basically sets aside certain text um, in one area. It's, it's supposed to make it easier to float something or position something. And we'll get into that when it comes pertinent when I show you the CSS. But for now, just write the aside tag on here. And I'm going to write a paragraph again. And I'm going to go to what I wrote for that. Control V. And then we're going to get inside that selection list here pretty soon, guys. Okay, and before we do, um, I'm going to go ahead and end this paragraph tag. And that's basically uh, set aside for, um, uh, for a list item that we are going to be doing soon. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to create yet another paragraph tag with inside here. Actually inside here, rather. And I'm going to name this. I'm just going to say below are some of the breeds we have available 
at our school to be adopted. Okay, well, let me go ahead and end that paragraph tag. Oh, come on, there you go. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, and this is where I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Um, it's a center tag, by the way, I'm centering this. This is the select. Now, this is going to uh, basically give us that drop down list, but first we got to fill it full of options first. So, what we're going to do is we're going to space this, we're going to write option value equals and whatever. I'm going to put so for example Kali right and I'm going to end the option and I'm basically going to repeat this a few times and I'm going to kind of name these I don't know Pitbull, uh, Great Dane, Irish Wolfhound, I don't know, I'm running out of names here, um, I don't know, Pugs, or something, I don't know, I'm kind of running out of names. And when you do your option tags, you put a value in here, value is simply something the server understands. And then, of course, you end your option. Now, there's other things you can do with uh, with options. You can put names on them. You can make IDs, just like we were doing with uh, other things. But I'm just doing the basic selection list. That's all we're doing. And so, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end the select. And end the center. I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to show you exactly what we just did. And Hi guys, welcome back. I'm sorry about that. I, what I made a mistake on is I forgot to uh, write this end tag here. And I was supposed to get an absent value of a address. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that I only filled out one address here. Um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I filled out one address here. But odds are it's not going to work. Actually, I know it's not going to work. And it's for the, let's take a look. It's for the Great Dane. Yep, the Great Dane. Okay. So what you do is you write down whatever the address is. In this case, it was google.com slash images, whatever. And you write, and at the end, you end your option tag like that, and your select, the center, all that. So that's the value. Now, when I save this, which I did, and I reload this, remember the Great Dane was the one that was configured. If I go to it, guess what? It doesn't work, right? Well, you're probably wondering, well, why is that? Because I put the address on there. For some odd reason, when they um, programmed HTML5, they didn't do it to where it, uh, the option list can go to a link. That can only be done right now. I don't know. Maybe the next update you can do it with CSS HTML. But the only way to do that right now is through JavaScript programming. And I don't want to do that right now because I don't want to confuse anyone. Because um, I just want to do just strictly HTML for right now. My next tutorial I'll get into CSS and that little bit of JavaScript to make that work. Um, but normally what would happen is I would click on this and it would go straight to that website um, once I show you that JavaScript programming uh, in the next tutorial. But for now, um, we're going to leave it as that and we're going to go ahead and continue on. Also, I was supposed to uh, cut this out and I was supposed to place that um, over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, no, that's not what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to take this one. I'm sorry. Cut. And we'll go ahead and paste that here.
we're going to end that aside tag right here. Um, so let me just go ahead and save it, and I'm going to show you real quick. So I'm going to say, here, here's below are some breeds that we have available at our school to be adopted. And basically what happens is the person goes and selects one, takes them to a website. Obviously, I don't have JavaScript programming for it right now. I'll show you that in the next tutorial. And I'll go straight to our web page, and I'll show like different pictures of the breeds uh, from our website and everything else. So that's what that's supposed to do. And then it says when you finish with that, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and place... Um, an image tag in here, uh, and I'm just, I just picked like a little news image clip art that I found on the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, I need to. Uh, I'm gonna put this in an href because what the idea is that they would click on the image, and after they click on the image, it will take them to my newsletter. Uh, so I got to make the image itself clickable. So to do that is you would put it in an href tag, just like so, and then you would begin your image tag. And I got to look at my notes here. What did I name it? Let's see images. Let's see what was the name of it. Newsletter.jpg. Just like so. Uh, alt tag uh, news letter which is a, a horrible alt tag name for it because if you're trying to rank you'd probably write something like uh, dog training newsletter or something like that and I'm gonna give this an ID equals news oops news letter and that's it now if I save this, um, you're going to notice something. It's going to be really huge on the page. Yeah, really huge. But that's what we wanted. Uh, if, you, if you're looking, if you're following along, um, we're almost done. We just got to create these two banner ads here. And then we need to create this um, footer. And we're done. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So after this, uh, after this image here, uh, now we're ready to create the um, div classes uh, for for the footer. Uh, before I do that, though, actually, let me create the div classes. Uh, this is at the side, by the way. Let me create the div classes for the um, ID or the uh, ad blocks here, and I'm going to name them ad block underscore one two five time or by one two five you, you could name it whatever you want I this just happens to be easier for me and I'm gonna write down I'm gonna center this I'm gonna put some spaces on here and I'm gonna say place add here put some more of that uh, line breaks here. I'm going to write 125 pixels. Same thing. Put a break here. Put an X. Put another break. Oops. And another 125 pixels. Basically height and width is basically what I'm trying to say here. And then I'm going to place the center. And I'm going to end this div tag. I know that was quite a quite a doozy there. Um, but luckily, to do the second one, all I'm going to do is copy and paste. And that was simple enough. Except on this one, I'm going to name it to add block or, I don't know, add block. Yeah, to. Second add block, basically. That way I have a, a name for it, so I can reference it, uh, reference it later. Or, let's see, actually, you know what, I'd place that 2 over here, that makes more sense. Alright, we hit save it. And it should have created that, so let's check it out.
and it did. Um, however, it's clickable because I forgot something. It's clickable because I forgot, you guys can guess it, I forgot to end my href tag up here. Did you guys notice that? That's why it's very important that you guys end your tags every time you do something. So let's go ahead and reload. And it fixed that, as you can see. Obviously, this is clickable now because uh, it will take me to my newsletter website, which, I, of course, I don't have it coded. All right, and now we're down to the very last thing, and that's the footer, which I like, by the way. Normally, to do a footer, you would write footer just like that. As you can see, it's a tag. It's colored like that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use div tags. And I'm going to write div class equals footer because I like as I like div tags I think they're a lot more cleaner equals footer and then we're going to create uh, some address tags and inside the address I'm going to make things centered by the way and inside the address uh, I'm going to write down well, whatever I think is appropriate I guess I'm going to write down Tammy and AMP, and I'm explain these symbols here. James Dog Training School. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And NBSP semicolon and number I'm sorry ampersand number symbol 9728 now I know this is this is Greek to everybody right now um, but basically what I'm doing is I had to write this one down this one I'm referring to my notes because I couldn't remember these uh, basically what this is, is these are different characters if you guys remember that Sun symbol let me just exile this real quick uh, you guys might remember this Sun symbol here also, I'm putting it for this as well, but if you guys remember the sun symbol, that's what I'm doing right now. So, I, I know it seems like a lot, but it's a lot just to make that. And if you're kind of wondering where that is, you can do a Google search for um, special characters, HTML codes. And you go to w3schools.com, and sure enough, Here's all the symbols. This is where I'm getting those numbers from, guys. I just wrote this one down because I didn't want to refer back to this. But anyways, this is where you get it from. W3Schools.com slash tag slash ref underscore symbols dot ASP. And this would go to this webpage right here. And it has all these different symbols at. So this is what the sun symbol looks like, the one we're doing now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and refer back to my notes. On this one, I'm copying word for word from my notes because I don't want to screw this up. And 1977 Highway 28 South or whatever. I don't know. I'm just making that part up though. And ampersand. And BSP. And ampersand. Number 9728. I didn't mean to put two of them on there. Nine seven two eight and NBSP. By the way, this NBSP I should have explained this. Uh, what NBSP does it gives you a space. So that's that's basically all it does. NBSP and I'm gonna write council C O N C I L council bluffs Iowa. Five one five zero three, and I'm gonna write ampersand nbsb, which is a space, by the way. And I'm gonna write a br tag because I want this to go on to the next line. It's typically how phone numbers are done. And same thing, ampersand. Um, NBSB 
whatever the number is, 555, obviously you know this is made up, 271, I don't know, whatever, 1901, I guess, whatever I want to put on there. And then simply you want to end the address tag, and end center. I know that was quite a doozy, but you know that's why I, I wrote notes on that part, guys. Um, because it's hard for me to memorize all those symbols. I don't know any programmers actually that has all those symbols memorized. Um, I certainly don't. I don't. Know. So, and that's it. Um, we should already have a div tag down here from the main container, and we do, and the body tag, and that's well, that's it. We're gonna go ahead and save it and refresh. Reload, and here you, here you go. Um, you got Taming James Dog Training School. Here's that star symbol. Obviously, I made a mistake here. Highway 28 South, Council Bluffs, and BSP. Okay, I, yeah, I made a mistake there. It's supposed to be uh, something else. And then you got the phone number. Let me go ahead and fix my mistake. I already see what I did wrong. I put a B. I was supposed to put a P on there. So let's go ahead and fix that, put a P, go ahead and save this, and it should be correct this time, and it is. Okay, so that's how you guys make that um, star symbol there, um, is that special character set, and again, you can find those character sets at W3 schools. They have a long list of them. You could have used, I don't know, the pi symbol for math. You could have used whatever this symbol is. You could use whatever you want. So, so this concludes my HTML tutorial. The next one we're going to do is my favorite, and that's where we're actually going to style things. On the next tutorial, we're going from this Blase website that we got here, and we're going to style it to where it looks like this. So I can't wait. This is probably the best part. Uh, we can make things styled, make things look really cool and neat, um, and make it look more impressive looking. So I'll see you on the next tutorial.